Hey everyone! In this video we are going to talk about how information systems can improve process quality. So in the last video we were talking a lot about the different types of processes that there are, the different scopes of processes, and the information systems that are associated with the different scopes of every process. And of course the goal of an information system is to actually improve the process that it is assisting. So that's what we're going to talk about. It's going to be a pretty brief discussion, but we're going to talk about the ways in which an information system can improve a process quality. Now, when I'm talking about process quality right here, there's two different measures for what actually makes a process you know, high quality versus low quality. There's two things we can use in order to determine what the quality of a process is. The first would be the process efficiency, the ratio of outputs to inputs. So if you have two processes, process A and process B, and you have X inputs, if process A can get more outputs from X inputs or more value from X inputs than process B is able to, then we say that A is more efficient. The ratio of the number of outputs that A is able to get out of X inputs is greater than the ratio of the number of outputs B is able to get from X inputs. And because A is has that higher efficiency than B, we can say that A might be of higher quality. Not 100% guaranteed, because we also have to look at the other measure of quality. Process effectiveness is essentially how well a process can achieve an organizational strategy. And this is also a really, really important thing to note because you want your processes to work towards the organizational strategies in place. You want your processes to be helpful. So a high quality process would ideally you know, try to achieve the organizational strategy. It would try to work towards achieving the goals of the organization, no matter what the scope of those goals are. So you kind of have to get a good balance between efficiency and effectiveness for a process to be of high quality. You can have very high efficiency processes that aren't effective because they don't achieve the goals at all. They, they just do something else entirely. And you can have uh, processes that work really well towards the strategy. They're very effective, but they require way, 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 way more inputs than any other alternative uh, processes out there. So there are ways for a process to be high efficiency, low effectiveness. There are ways for a process to be high effectiveness, low efficiency. And we want to make organizational processes that are as high in, in efficiency as possible and as high in effectiveness as possible. So ideally, when we introduce an information system into a process in order to assist it, in order to improve it, that information system is going to help in one of these aspects. So we can improve a process. We can improve the effectiveness or efficiency of a process by either changing the process structure, uh, changing the process resources, or changing both the structures and the resources of the process. Changing the process structure would involve reorganizing the process. So maybe there's some sort of waiting period that can be eliminated because uh, one uh, particular activity, um, and remember that processes are made up of different activities, one particular activity needed another particular activity to be finished before that particular activity could be completed. So maybe changing the structure so that things can work sort of in uh, tandem at the same time in parallel uh, would be really helpful. Or eliminating sort of resource deadlocks where 
multiple things are trying to use the same uh, resource at the same time, but that resource can only be used one at a time. It can only be used in one activity at a time. Uh, things like that could help improve a process. It could help improve the efficiency. If we change the process structure and end up improving uh, the amount of time that process takes or the amount of money that process takes or you know number of resources it requires, all that kinds of stuff, we might also uh, increase the effectiveness of that process as well. If the, in fact, effect, if the uh, or organizational strategy that we are working towards is something like um, trying to stick within a specific budget or trying to reduce wasted time or money or something like that. So that can be really helpful as well. Now, changing the process resources could involve a number of things. It could be changing up the budget or the number of people working on specific activities. If a specific activity is taking a very long time and if it's causing some sort of deadlock in the process, uh, maybe assigning more people towards that activity, whether that's hiring people or reassigning existing employees or something, that could increase how uh, efficient that process is. Um, even through automation, um, adding in a information system as a resource that the process can use uh, in order to automate things that take a long time that can be another way of increasing effectiveness and efficiency of a process. So changing the resources here, uh, giving more resources where they're needed or moving resources around or something like that can be a way of improving a process. And of course, sometimes you need to do both. Uh, sometimes you start approaching some structural problems and realize you need some resource problems instead because a structural problem doesn't uh, fully handle everything. Or sometimes you have a resource problem and then you start reassigning things and all of a sudden you, re you realize that the structure of the process needs to be changed along with the redistribution of resources. Sometimes you do need to do both. And typically you won't start out trying to change both, but rather you might identify an initial problem change things and then see more problems or more ways that the process can be improved along the way that might involve changing structure or resources or something like that. And you just keep on making those changes until you get a good high quality process at the very end. So sometimes you end up changing both. Now we talked about the three ways that we can improve process quality, but we have a lot of our tools at our disposal for improving process quality. And sometimes introducing an information system can actually improve the process quality. So let's look at the ways in which information systems are able to do that. Sometimes you can use an information system to perform an, enti an entirety of an activity. So automate an, an activity in its entirety. Now, this would be the type of activity where um, it's more suited for computational work than for human labor. So this might be things like uh, doing payment systems, doing uh, credit checks, all that kind of stuff, making sure that a customer actually has the funds on hand to pay for a product rather than making a human place calls to a bank or to a credit card company or something like that. That can be an example of automating that task. So if a human was still doing it, uh, that would that could be automated so that an information system handles the whole thing. That's just one example. But you know, if you have an activity within your process and it happens to be the type of labor that can be automated, then sometimes it is beneficial to automate that activity. Now you have to look at whether or not automation would actually be beneficial because there's plenty of things that automation can't handle. 
whether that's because technology isn't that far yet or if it would be too cost prohibitive or sometimes there's things that computers just cannot do period there are problems that computers cannot solve and we can conclusively prove that they cannot solve those types of problems and the best we'll possibly get is use some sort of artificial intelligence to try to make a best guess but you have to think about the expenses of uh, using that kind of technology or building that kind of technology versus the expenses of using a human in order to do that kind of work you have to look at the inputs and outputs that each of those uh, different variations can take, whether it's the automatic variation or the human-led variation. Um, you have a lot of things that you need to consider before choosing to automate, because automation can be really expensive, and when it goes wrong, it goes very wrong. So, it is highly dependent on the particular activity, and it's worth consulting um, experts in the field to see like whether or not that's a good idea but when it works it works and it works great when it does so that can be that can be a fantastic way of improving process quality sometimes uh, you can use information systems to augment a human performing an activity and i'm not talking about making cyborgs here uh, we do not live in that future uh, yet we'll see if wetware becomes a thing if corporate wetware ends up actually happening that would kind of be terrifying if you ask me regardless um when we're talking about augmenting we're talking about making it easier for a human to do a task so i talked about how there's plenty of tasks where it's impossible for a computer to do them and humans have a much easier time doing them but there are times where you can sort of meet halfway, where you can have a human doing the human-centric side of things, and you can have a machine doing the machine-centric side of things. So if a task is something that can't be done by a computer, but it involves a lot of calculation, or if, say, using a spreadsheet or a database or some sort of like calendar or task tracking program or anything like that would be helpful for the human to complete that activity, then that's where this falls in. That's the augmentation that I'm talking about right here. Computers have become so popular within the business world because of the benefits of augmenting people with computers. Um, because computers are an expensive investment for a business. It can cost quite a bit of money to get good computers for their employees, but they're so valuable, that augmentation is so valuable that businesses think of that as a worthwhile expense. Uh, humans have been able to increase their productivity Thanks to the use of computers, we're doing actually quite a bit of work in one workday uh, compared to what people used to do before computers became mainstream in businesses. So this can be big. This can be extremely helpful. Augmenting, uh, he augmenting human employees with information systems. So... Yeah, very, very helpful tool for improving process quality right here is introducing a new information system, whether that's uh, adding in new software that is helpful or defining new procedures or getting new hardware, all that kind of stuff that can be a very beneficial thing to do. Now, the third way is uh, controlling data quality and process flow. Uh, with data quality, right, we've talked about data quality. We've talked about good quality data and bad quality data. And information systems can actually do quite a bit in order to make sure that uh, we're working with good quality data. 
And when we have good data, then we're going to have good outputs as well. Um, you know, if we're doing things like checking for errors in data or checking for unexpected or missing values or any of that kind of thing, uh, it's trivially easy to write programs that can handle that type of work. So you don't need to worry about uh, humans entering data into things and possibly making mistakes or possibly missing uh, data values or anything like that. It's very possible for an information system to automatically take a look at all the available data to check it to make sure it looks good and then to start formatting it and putting it into the right place. Um, with the caveat that, of course, the software itself that's doing that data quality checking, that data quality controlling, that software has to be very, very well tested uh, because it's also trivially easy to make a mistake when you're testing data, when you're formatting it in useful ways, and when you're sending it off to whoever needs it next. So very important that the software is good quality. But supposing that the uh, information system is of good quality, then it's going to do a really good job controlling data. Controlling process flow is also uh, a really interesting benefit of information systems because information systems can actually make sure that a process, you know, the different activities of a process are happening in the first place, that they're happening correctly, that they're happening in the right order, and that they're getting all the right input and output. And they can automatically uh, flag a human worker and say, hey, this one thing didn't um, actually get done correctly. So you need to check this over and see what happened. But we talked about the uh, very basic online sales uh, process diagram in the first video. Really, the process of uh, checking inventory, reporting back to the customer if an item is out of, is out of stock, uh, checking with the payment method uh, and the bank possibly controlling that payment method to see um, whether or not the customer is actually able to pay and then placing in that transaction request or whatever. Uh, and then, you know, presenting uh, the different special conditions, asking the user to do shipping, you know, um, choose shipping, uh, actually put in their information, all that kind of stuff, and then send that order information to the uh, people in inventory and the people in shipping so that they can actually get the order ready and all that. But having those activities controlled by an information system can save a lot of time. It can make sure that everything actually gets done correctly, and it can uh, make sure everything happens in the right order. You want to make sure that the item is in stock before you check to make sure that the customer actually is able to pay before you uh, make sure that the, you know, before you check that the uh, shipping information is right and all that kind of stuff before you actually place the order and send that information over. Um, you really, you want to make sure that all of that is done in the right order and that it's done correctly. With a human worker, especially if a human worker is handling hundreds of orders a day, it could be very easy, easy to accidentally charge a customer before realizing, oh no, the item that they tried to order is out of stock and we might not get it for another month or something like that. Or it might be easy to forget to check at all, charge the customer, send all that information over and then let a uh, customer service deal with it when issues arise. So that could be a lot of work for the business. It could be some lost value and all of, all of those types of troubles. So when an information system is able to control the data and control the process flow, 
when it's able to make sure everything is being done right, that the inputs are correct, the outputs are correct, all that kind of stuff, it can be really helpful for the process quality because then customers aren't, in the uh, online shop example, customers aren't going to struggle to place their orders and they might be more likely to come back. All right, well, pretty short video. Um, that is how information systems can improve process quality. We talked about what process quality actually means, the ways to improve process quality, and then how information systems specifically can improve process quality. So in the next video, we will talk about what's known as a departmental silo and how information systems can help with that.